All right, check, check, one, two, three. Okay, okay, I think we are live. I think we are live, okay? Live stream is working. And if you're watching later on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, or wherever we put this video, just want to say hello. My name is DJ Soto, the lead pastor of Virtual Reality Church. And I'm in a kaleidoscope here um, in VR chat. It's a really cool space. Um, and I picked the space for a reason, and I'll tell you that in a second. But um, in church, we've been studying the book of First, Second, and Third John. We've been reading chapter by chapter through all these books, and we just finished Second John. We're about to go into Third John, but I wanted to go back and like zoom in on something that I saw in Second John. We've been talking about it in life groups all week, um, and I thought it'd be good to review it because as we go into Third John today, uh, there's something special about Third. Excuse me, about Second John that I want to talk about that I think is very beautiful, very powerful, and also transformative to our lives. And so, yeah, let me talk about that for a couple of minutes, and then I want to pray for you here in a minute, um, wherever you're at, whatever the part of the world you're from. Um, and so there's a lot to read about in Second John, so I encourage you to go back. Uh, there's a lot of great, there's a great Bible app called the YouVersion Bible app. You should download it. Um, and read through Second John. Pick the translation that you like, because the Bible can have a lot of you know um, translations that are confusing to read. But the YouVersion Bible app has translations that are easy to understand. So uh, pick a translation that works for you, and read through Second John. Because I'm gonna not I'm not gonna talk about everything. There's just a couple key points, and that's at the beginning of the book uh, of the letter. Really, it's a letter where John, I guess he met a lady and her children, uh, perhaps it was through travel, or at some point they established a relationship and they became friends with this family. And so he was writing to them. And there is something in the beginning of the passage of scripture in Second John where he says to her three things. He says, grace, mercy, and peace. Those three things, he, that's how he started the letter. So, you know, when you say maybe on Facebook or an email, hey, how are you? How are you doing? Um, his greeting was grace, uh, mercy, and peace. Hold on. Let me move this camera real quick. It's kind of distracting me a little bit. And, I, and so going back to the grace, mercy, and peace, I don't think that was just a random um, just greeting, right? And I think sometimes when I've read that in Second John before, I just thought of it just a random greeting and just say, hey, hey, what's up? How's it going? All right, let's get to the meat of it. But there's something I believe that was super intentional about those three words, grace, mercy, and peace. And it was intentional and as well as foundational for what he was going to be talking about. Because he's going to be talking about loving others and following God's commandment. And God's commandment is to love one another. And I'll talk about that in a second. But grace, mercy, and peace. And let's think about that for a second. I'm going to use a uh, a couple of examples here. So let me run over here. And I'm just going to grab this uh, ball here. It's going to kind of float. Uh-oh, I'm losing it. Come back. There we go. I got it. Um, so we'll kind of let this ball here, floating orb, represent grace. Um, and what is grace? Well, I think there's a lot of definitions out there. I heard one good one that says it's it's uh, God's riches at Christ's expense. Um, in, in a nutshell, this this idea of grace is we are receiving things that we don't deserve. We didn't work for it. We didn't earn it. Uh, we don't deserve it, but we're going to receive it anyway. And that's how much God loves us. God loves us so much that he is going to give a, give good things into our life. He's going to um, just bless us with favor and blessing and love and and good things in our life. And that's super important. I think that the writer started out that way. He wanted us to get our minds open to the possibility of receiving good things, because maybe some of us have a hard time receiving things that are good, because maybe we think of ourselves as I'm no good, I'm worthless, I'm a failure, you know, that type of thing. But God's like, I love you so much, and I want to I have grace for you. I have, I'm going to give you good things that maybe you don't deserve, you weren't looking for, you weren't even thinking about. It's just my goodness because I love you. And that idea of grace, God's riches 
at Christ's expense is such a beautiful, beautiful thought. And so um, the writer opened up the book of Second John with this idea of receiving good things. And don't be resistant to that. Have faith in that. That's beautiful. Be looking for that, looking for those good things as you live your life. Man, what a what an amazing thing there. So I'm going to let this float. And this idea of grace, by the way, is greater than I can even articulate. It's more than I can even explain or, um, you know, teach about it. This idea of grace is greater than you can imagine. There's more love, more favor, more blessing than I can articulate. And that is the beauty of God's grace, this divine love, this dimension of spirituality that just is, receives the good things that God has for you, even though we don't deserve it. So um, that's grace there. Well, so the next word he used, let me see if I can get this thing to float right in the sky here. So the next thing, the next word he used was was beautiful too. Let's see here. What word can I use? Oh, my camera is hitting it. All right. So then um, we'll just use this guy over here. He said to the chosen lady and her children, grace, mercy, and peace. So we talked about grace. But now let's talk about mercy. We'll let this little orb. Um, hold on. Let me see if I can get that. There we go. They kind of float away. So uh, let's talk about mercy for a second. We'll let this orb represent mercy just as a visual um, illustration here. And mercy is the opposite of grace in the sense that over here in grace, um, we receive things that we don't deserve. Here's the idea of mercy is that maybe we do deserve it. Maybe we failed. Maybe we've um, maybe bad things should come our way. Maybe we should get it, but mercy says you're not going to receive those bad things, those bad things that should come your way because of your failure, your guilt, your regret, your mistakes. Mercy says, nope, um, I'm going to block that. And that's a beautiful thing. So in grace, we're receiving good things. In mercy, we're not getting the bad things. And so um, I love that idea of God's mercy in our lives. And that's so beautiful because some of us are burdened down by guilt and regret and shame and failure and you name it. And it's just been, it's just kind of spinning our lives out of control. And God's like, hold on a second. I want to have mercy in your life. I want to stop those bad things from covering your way. Even though we might deserve it, God's mercy is so great. Um, the Bible calls it um, at one point, unfailing love, unfailing faithfulness. So his faithfulness and his love to us, that's a beautiful thing, but there's this word he adds to it, and he says it's unfailing. It's never going to stop. It's never going to run out. You know, you always run out of stuff, right? You run out of gas. You run out of, you know, groceries. You run out of, you know, when you go to the store, oh, I'm sorry, we ran out of that. But with God's love, God's faithfulness, God's kindness, it never runs out. It's never like, oh, sorry, uh, you used up your quota. Um, nope, you messed up too many times. That's just too bad for you. No, his mercy is unfailing. It's always there. And that's a beautiful, that's a beautiful thing. So grace and mercy be to you. And then one last thing, let's see if I can keep this still here. And then one last thought, and we'll just use this, this one. Whoa. Oh, let me grab it. Let me tr throw it actually. Just to see, wow, this works pretty good here. I mean, this thing's book, when you throw them, it books across. All right. All right, here we go. Oh, my camera's going to hit it. So I'm going to do one of these. All right. And then the last one is grace, mercy. Oh, stay here. And the last one right here is peace. Um, peace is a beautiful thing as well. Uh, for me, it's the idea of laying your head on your pillow every night and just in peace. Like, it's all good. All the worries, all the the concerns, all the things that keep us up at night, that wake us up in the middle of the night. Peace says, nope, you're going to sleep well. And God wants to have peace in your life. And that's hard, right? Because there's a lot going on in our lives, in the world. I mean, there's a there's a lot that can cause fear, anxiety worry, depression. There's a lot. 
Um, I mean, it could be at work or at school and the news. I mean, it's, it's never ending, but peace transcends all of that. Peace transcends all of that and says, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to let God handle it. Let God take care of it. Oop, my piece is getting away. Let me see if I can grab it. There we go. And it's almost like a formula as well. So what it left to right, let me think about this. How am I looking at this? I want to go over here. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's almost like a formula in the sense of like, here's grace uh, plus mercy is going to equal peace in our lives. Grace, mercy, and peace. Receive the good things that God has for you. Uh, be blessed in not receiving the good things that should come your way. Um, the mistakes and consequences and failure. And then peace. Um, going to bed every night in peace and without anxiety and worry. Yeah, this is the this is these three things are super powerful. Um, Although I'm trying to, they're all kind of floating away. Let me get them a little closer. Grace, mercy, and peace. And this isn't, like I said at, at the beginning of the uh, story, this isn't a random uh, welcome. This has intention to it. God wants us to experience grace. God, God wants us to experience mercy. And God wants us to experience peace. And then, you know, not only that, he wants us to share it with others. So this grace, mercy, and peace. So let's talk about grace for a second. Um, it's not just for us. It's to share. So if there's somebody in your life that you want to do good things for, maybe they don't deserve it. Maybe they get on your nerves, but you're going to do something good for them anyway. You're going to show grace to them. And then the same idea with mercy to that person you just want to like, you're frustrated with, but you're going to show mercy to them. Maybe you could give it to them. Maybe you can get them to a lot of big trouble or I don't know, but you show mercy. And then that's hopefully going to result in peace. But even if not, I think God wants us, at least when I say not peace, just peace in their life. But even if there's no peace in their life, to show grace and mercy and peace is a beautiful thing. And then the writer goes into his theme that he's been talking about the whole time about loving one another. And in First John, you saw he'd been talking about all the time, almost like a like a, uh, a broken record, just kind of skipping, like love one another, love one another, love one another. And in Second John, the same idea is true. It's to love one another, to have love to, to, to each other, to care for each other, to think about each other, to meet each other's needs. It's a beautiful thing. And I think the writer is like, you need to experience, to, to love other people, you need to experience grace, you need to experience mercy, and you need to experience peace. And then that trifecta, if you will, is the catalyst for you to love one another. That's beautiful. And, and one last thought I had about uh, Second John is, um, if you go back and read it, you might be confused about something you see there. Um, at one point, he uses the word commandment. And if you've been at VR Church, you, you might say, well, Pastor Soto, I thought you said that, you know, it's about a relationship with God. It's about uh, living by faith. I thought you said it wasn't following the commandments. Well, yeah, there is one commandment that the writer wants you to follow, and that's to love one another. And here's my theory about why I think he used the word commandment, because the people that he was writing to were probably just coming out of a very entrenched religious system, a religious system that was a had an endless list of rules and demands and regulations and requirements and fear and control and manipulation and all these things. That was, it was an experience just based on commandments. Do this, don't do that, wear this, don't wear that, you know, all of those things. So in their brain, uh, spirituality and religion and faith had to do about the commandments, follow the commandments. And so he was like, okay, let me uh, meet them where they're at. And this is my theory. And so that's why you'll see in 2 John, it says, you need to follow God's commandment. And then he says, you know what his commandment is? To love one another. That is the commandment that God wants you to follow. So the commandment is to love one another and to love one another is the commandment. And that's such a beautiful thing that God wants us to experience. It's not following all these rules and regulations and requirements and do this and don't do that and wear this and don't wear that. It's simply about love. And that is what the writer of Second John wanted us to know. 
Well, I hope that you are encouraged. Let me say a prayer of blessing for you. I'm going to check these out. Um, grace, mercy, let me see if I can get peace to you. And peace. I don't think I can get it to hit the camera. Hold on. Grace, mercy, and peace. Oh, close enough. Let me say a prayer of blessing for everyone. Uh, God, we just uh, want to experience your grace, your mercy, and your peace. Help our minds and our heart, help our spirit inside of us to be open to receive that, to receive good things, to be blessed by your mercy, to experience peace, God. Help our lives to be transformed by this. And we also think of um, your commandment your commandment to love one another. Help us to live this life, not full of religion, rules, and regulations, but full of love towards one another. And that's what you've commanded us to do. And we pray for everyone that's watching, uh, whether they're watching now live or later on demand, that you'll bless them, that you'll transform their spirit into the spirit of love. And in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen, everyone. Thanks for hanging out and for the live stream and maybe uh, later as well. Uh, we'll see you later at VR Church. Thanks for hanging out.